In my more cynical moments, um, in my time with the trade union movement, I've concluded that given the choice between cooperating and fighting, people will inevitably choose to fight. Um, I don't really think that that's true, but I think that some sort of conflict and discord and a desire for it is part of our nature. Um, and uh, again, this goes down to uh, Nietzsche's handling of the ancient Greek term of agon, competition. Uh, the Greeks seem to recognize this, that, uh, that strife and uh, discord, they even had a goddess for discord, Eris, was something that um, is inherent to our nature, and we might as well not try to suppress that. We might as well manage it, and of course the Greeks managed it by coming up with, um, first of all, elaborate rules for war. They always were at war with each other, but there was a very set specific way in which one had to fight a war. And secondly, um, they came up with things like the Olympic Games, the Pythian Games, the uh, uh, the uh, Isthmian Games, and all these various games where you went off and competed with each other in sports, which could sometimes get pretty brutal. Uh, because they understood that if discord gets out of hand, uh, everything gets sidetracked, including uh, society itself, or at least e even derailed, rather, not just sidetracked. Um, everything uh, collapses. Society can't function when Eris completely takes over. So even though there is a constant need to nod towards her, if she rules the world, then we've got nothing but Hobbesian chaos. Nasty, brutish, and short, etc. <clears throat> um... But again, it does seem to be something that is inherent in our condition that we want to fight. Uh, we go onto YouTube, and you know the phenomenon of YouTube drama is pretty well known. But um, the phenomenon uh, often sort of takes over in certain dynamics, and we've seen Pyro and uh, uh, in Mendham having a um, high-profile falling out. I guess um, another person has sort of walked away, shaking their head from. Gary. Um, and I wonder if this is simply when discord sort of takes over, when the competition becomes destructive, and um, instead of actually having some ideas that we can actually bandy around, um, uh, the discordant part of any sort of competition becomes too deadly. The Olympic game has turned into a war. Um, I wonder if we're not managing discord effectively, as effectively as we might. Again, um, Nietzsche says that uh, struggle and this sort of thing um, are part of us. But we have to understand that these things must not be allowed to take over. Um, it's a useful part of us because that's how we become better people, is through struggling, overcoming obstacles, and struggling and the will to power is something that is that makes us better. Um, but um, the means that we use to do that can become toxic again. Um, uh, nothing in excess made in agon. Um, if we lean too far towards the discordant, uh, we get um, a completely sabotaged situation. A debate becomes a war. An Olympic game becomes a death struggle. Um, uh, it's an interesting thing, discord, and I think that our society kind of ignores it to its own detriment. Um, although one could always point to things like professional sports and competitions and America's Got Talent and all that sort of thing to say that that's kind of a... those sorts of competitions are sort of tamed down versions. But real agon and real discord is actually more serious than that. But... Um, it must not be allowed to degenerate into savage life and death uh, competition, unless, of course, the two parties involved have agreed to have it that way from the get-go. Um, it's a pity when people fall out to that extent. Um, and I think people know what my position is on this recent falling out. Um, but I don't think it's anything people couldn't have predicted in the past, based on um, past events and past uh, fallings out. <laughs> Dame Discord wins again? Possibly. Thank you.